Yo, what's up gamers? Welcome back to the UEM speedrun. We have started the longest grind in the whole run, being Slayer. But last time, Jirdel was literally the reincarnation of the devil, assigning me the worst possible tasks in a row, which forced me to do log out water fiends, because I ran out of points. And you sickos seem to enjoy that. Can't believe it. So to avoid you guys from enjoying the show a little bit too much, I'm going to be doing some point boosting. After the Water Fiends, I have 90 points to my name. The Water Fiends were, was my 180th task. So what I'm going to do now is just to do 9 tasks and then do the 10th task at Durdel to hopefully start building some points. And I'm thinking to like do this until 250 tasks total because if I go to Konar for the 250th, I get 630 points. So... Yeah, that's a nice bonus, and that should keep me afloat for the rest of Slayer. But still, the tasks that Turiel assigns, they do kind of suck, so... I am still losing some time here. But at least my Zombie Axe is slightly better than a Dragon Scimitar here. Because of the higher max hit, that I have a higher chance to one-hit uh, the bears. It's important to stay positive in a uh, not-so-ideal situation. But yeah, anyway, moving forward. Alright, just completed my 189th task. So next up is one from Jurdel. Alright, unblock worms first. Ward's task worms can be off the list because that's actually a very good task now. We actually got something! That is good! Tsars! No way! 166 Tsars. Let's fucking go, dude. And can you believe it, guys? He actually assigned me something that is a do task. Like, Tsars is a very good task for me now because it is a lot of melee XP. But <laughs> Jurdel didn't screw me over this time. So, yeah, that's epic. And my plan for like the start of Slayer is to first train a lot of strength because uh, yeah, that gives you a higher max hit, which is the biggest increase in DPS. So this task is actually perfect for that because I can lure them with two alt accounts and then jelly them for big strength XP drops. So a strength level is going to be flying up rapidly if you get more Tsars. And the cool thing with the Tsar task is that I actually still get full XP for the majority of the Tsar monsters. Because I do not attack all the Tsar monsters with my ult to lure them. But I do only attack like the, the Gem Knights, the Tsar hers. And they um, yeah, pretty much like scream for help because they are, <laughs> they are like useless. And then all the, the big strong guys come back them up. And then they aggro on my ult. And then I can like stack them up and then I can jelly them. And I'm using two worlds here, so one alt in like one world and one in the other. So I just hop between those two. So I can actually do this task like normally. No logout strats for this task. So it's actually yeah, pretty fun task to do. I uh, am a fan. And the XP rates are actually not too bad for this task. Getting around 40k an hour Slayer and a little bit shy of 200k melee XP per hour. And Hit 84 strength this task, so... And my goal for strength is going to be like around 94, 95 strength before I switch to attack training, because then I pretty much don't gain any max hits anymore. 200 tasks. Alright, dude, don't fuck me over again. Oh, that's good. That's a do. Thank you, Durdal. Killing blue dragons with my stats is currently not the best Slayer XP per hour, but with the help of this little spell, I can turn the Dragon Bones into a lot of prayer XP. The Sinister Offering gives three times the XP for the Dragon Bones, so it's basically a gilded altar that is portable with this. It's a, it's an insane update they have done over the years for Iron Man, but uh, yeah, it makes it so that I get a lot more prayer XP than I get Slayer XP on certain tasks, and actually makes it possible to finish prayer maybe before slayer i'm not too sure if it's actually possible to finish it but uh, i'm gonna try to do as much uh prayer xp during slayer with this but then again like th 
Getting to the GE isn't like that slow, so maybe I shouldn't even be bothering with that. 50 zombies. Um, I'm gonna kill these in the, um, the new place, I'm pretty sure. That's kind of good to do. Imagine if we get another zombie axe. Oh no! No! What the fuck, man? What am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> uh. Um, I think the X is going to um, be alchemized here. Hey! It's gone. And many trivial tasks later. And unfortunately, many, many innocent dwarves being slaughtered where their families will be waiting tonight for their husband or father to come home. But Turiel told me to do it, so we are now at 249 tasks, which means Konar is gonna assign me the last task before we actually start doing some proper Slayer. And Konar actually did not assign me any dragons this time. I got some Aberrant Spectres in the Slayer Tower, which is the regular location I would be doing them in anyway so that is perfect didn't need to skip at all so this is just straight profit in points and after completing the task we are awarded with 630 points putting me at a total at 1280 points so that is gonna be hopefully enough don't uh, want to get too excited but that should be a, uh, a lot better start than what we had uh, the last time with the water fiends and the rune dragons but before I'm gonna continue slaying at Duradel, I need to first block the Fossil Island Wyverns because Jagex added a block for one single task that costs 500 points by the way. Instead of actually making the task itself an unlock like all the other ones. But my first Duradel task is Cave Horrors. This is actually a skip. At first I was gonna do this, but... With the 7th block slot, I no longer needed to do these to keep profiting points, so... And get Black Dragons. Alright, Jurdel. Nice and easy one to start with. Jurdel assigned me some Dust Devils. Unfortunately, I forgot to extend them, so it's only gonna be a uh, relatively short task. But this is also a task I am doing, like, normally. No logout cheese or whatever. Because I am not yet 94 magic for Ice Barrage. I'm currently at 92, so I have the so I have to look around these magic potions that I saved from um, the Barblor. I saved around 50 magic pots and I need to drink these to boost to Ice Barrage for the best DPS and, and to not spend a fortune on a Blood Barrage. But yeah, it's not ideal to have my inventory filled up like this, so... I kind of just want to also do a lot of magic tasks so I can uh, yeah, get rid of these potions when I finally hit 94 magic. But for now, we do sip the pink potion to uh, boost the magic. And another good task that I am doing on the speedrun once again is Spiritual Warriors. I did this one last time on the main speedrun with a Crystal Halberd and then the logout strat with a spec transfer. Of course, I can't be doing it on Iron Man. And if I do equip a Crystal Halberd, I'm like dead right away because a Zemi book is my Zemi item here. But anyway, I barrage these this time to get some more magic XP uh, on the board so I can uh, get rid of the magic pots earlier. And these are actually a very good task to do for both points and XP rates because um, the Spiritual Warriors are actually kind of weird because they are not included on the list of monsters that you get like half XP from if you lure them with an alt. So you can just freely lure these with alts uh, by splashing on them. Because this was the way how uh, yeah, Slayer luring on Iron Man worked before they made the change. And uh, now it no longer works in like the catacombs for all the Necreals, Dust Devils, Epidemons. But it still works for um, Spiritual Warriors because I don't think there's ever been anyone barraging these before me and jcw but uh yeah here we are getting some uh nice xp an hour all right that did work hey oh we played legs wait that's actually pretty good um i pulled a jcw here 
I think he also got very lucky on them. But I'm not sure if I want to keep those, actually. I'll pick them up for now. I don't think that's, like, that good. It's, like, one strength bonus, but... Like, I kind of need prayer bonus as well. I don't know. What are the chances, though, that I actually get the legs? Ooh, superior. Definitely have to do the step back on this guy. Oh, he's hitting me. Oh, asshole. What's the max hit of this thing? Don't want to do stupid mistakes. Ow, he hit me again. No, no, no! Oh my god. <laughs> 28 max hit! Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. You can't click here. Like, it doesn't even do anything. I'm getting nervous. Oh, 52 HP. <laughs> Dude. Can you move, worm? Fucking hell, dude. Alright, I got his ass. Dude, that was so not worth it. I have to already bank. <laughs> but aside from that, superior uh, worms are actually a really good task to do because it is nice melee XP and all the bones you can use with the offering spells for prayer XP. So the task is basically one to one in terms of slayer and prayer XP. So yeah, really solid. But uh, yeah, not uh, not the best first superior encounter there. I um, I did get chanced by it, so that is definitely not ideal. I'm not really used to like uh, doing the step back method for this superior with a 5 tick weapon and uh, yeah that definitely uh, showed. I, <laughs> I think I spent like two and a half minutes killing that thing and um, if I do die I do lose my bracelets that I have in the death bank so um, and all the silver bars as well. So ideally I do not blank to superiors but uh, yeah this was a really close call already for the first one so uh, yeah, not a great look. And here are the bracelets in a question. I made these last episode and stored them in the death bank. And I'm using them for Tsars and Dagonauts right now. So I've got a Tsar task now. And for a Tsars, it's really easy to use these bracelets. Because, yeah, you can just like equip them after a uh, special attack. Similar to how I did it on the main speedrun. And I'm using them on Tsars now because I really want to get like as much strength XP as possible. So, um... Yeah, extending this task is uh, the best way to do that. Alright, filling the blocks list up now with gargoyles. I still have fire giants on here, which will be removed once I unlock breaks, I guess. Trolls, oh no, that's a do as well for now. Yes, you heard that right, trolls are a do. Because my way to go about like Slayer is like... Necreals and Epidemons will be my best Slayer tasks, but I'm not yet at 80 Slayer or 85, so I just thought like if I do pretty much every task that is like somewhat doable pre-80 Slayer to build like enough points, it allows me to like skip even more when I do have Necreals and Epidemons unlocked to like maximize my time at those two tasks. And pair that with the bracelets makes me uh, like spending a lot of time at uh, Necreals and Epidemons, so yeah. Trolls must be done for now, and I'm doing this with um, with alts, of course. And these guys, you also could just splash on and still get the full XP because they are not on the same list as the necrils and uh, dust devils, etc. But still, task kind of sucks. But with all this barraging, I do run out of runes, and more specifically, dead runes, because I still have 60k blood runes. But my stupid ass sold most of the death runes back when I was doing Guardians of the Rift because I thought I needed all the money for construction with the mythical capes. But yeah, then Krames came along and I actually did not need the money. 
But yeah, now I do have to buy all my death runes back. So I'm losing a little bit of money here. But it's all for a good cause. Because my task right now, Dagonauts, is probably my favorite task to do. Because this one actually has a very high skill ceiling. And I'm currently not that good at it yet. But um, this task is really fun. Like I have two dancers set up on those tiles. So the Dagonauts stacking is a little easier. But um, yeah, since they have aggro... Um, you can just like do these on your own without like having to lure them with an alt or anything. So this task is actually just great, man. It's good XP, they drop seeds, they drop and sold heads for a little bit of prayer XP. So yeah, I'm uh, also slaughtering these because yeah, that's just uh, probably the best task I have right now. And I'm still using a water stuff because like auto casting is not that necessary for most of the barrage tasks I do now. And I actually want the magic XP, so there's no need for defensive casting with the ancient staff. And I still have my ancient staff still in the looting bag, so what I do is just I buy a staff of water from the Varrock staff shop. And then after I'm done with the barrage task, I can just like drop the water staff to open up another inventory slot for the melee task, so I can bring an extra prayer potion or something. Alright, 94 magic coming in in a couple barrages. There we go, 90 fucking 4. Can finally drop my uh, my magic pots. See ya. That frees up a lot of inventory space. And here we are again at the login screen while doing Slayer. At the start of this speedrun, I was excited to do Slayer as an Iron Man since yeah, logout Slayer was not possible. Since you would miss out on the loot and half the XP and spec transfer also doesn't work on Iron Man but unfortunately doing a logout slayer for Bloodfelds is still very worth doing and the way this works is by doing a thing called double barraging so what I do for this is to like first lure them with an alt then lower their hit points to almost zero and then log in on the UAM to start attacking one game take after my alt so we are both barraging but my UAM is one take delayed and due to the spell's travel delay, I can basically trick the game in thinking that the UAM did the last hit, even when the Bloodfeld did die from the damage from my alt. And this gives me half the Slayer XP per Bloodfeld regardless if I actually kill it or not. As I said earlier, I do not receive any drops from these Bloodfelds, but they don't really have any good drops in the first place. Like, they do drop some Blood Runes, but that's like not the end of the world. And I only have to do a couple casts instead of like killing the whole stack by, uh, on my own, which saves me quite a bit of runes. And the funny thing is, the superiors roll from the killing blow and not who did the most damage. So I still get the superiors. And you can get up to 130 to 140k an hour slayer quite easily with this. And on top of that, it halves the total Slayer XP received from this task, which means I get more Slayer XP in general to kill Necrules and Abbey Demons along the way to 99 Slayer. And if I get any insult heads on a task where I don't have the Arceus spellbook, what I do is just simply switch to the Arceus spellbook, teleport to the Dark Altar, and then do it after the task to get some extra prayer XP in. And we're actually really close to 80 Slayers, so that's gonna be the level for Necreals. I'm very excited to start doing those and actually start doing proper Herberance as well during Slayers, since my seed supply isn't that all consistent with only Aberrant Spectres and Dagonauts right now. Oh, I missed 80 Slayer. Woo, let's go. I already got a Necreal task as my second task after hitting 80 Slayer, and this task is just like amazing, man. They drop a lot of money, they drop a lot of herb seeds, and they drop the Malicious Ashes, which you can turn into 195 prayer XP each. And the Necreals only give 112 to 113 Slayer XP, so you're pretty much getting like close to double the prayer XP as you're getting in Slayer. And I'm killing these in the basement of the Slayer Tower. I was doing something on the top floor at first with an alt and some venom, but that didn't really work as I hoped. So I will have to go back to the drawing board for that one. But for now, I'll just uh, do these tasks in the basement when I do get them. And of course, using the slaughter braces for these because 
This is pretty much the best task I will do for Slayer. Even though the Slayer XP rate here isn't that high, but just all the other factors for this task are just making this a really good one. Alright, 90 strengths coming in. One more spec. Two more specs. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, there we go. 90 strengths. 105 combat as well. And when I do get a superior for the Necreoles, what I do to kill them safely is just to run out of their aggro range and then attack them again and just keep repeating that to slowly chip them down. Because these guys are pretty scary when you don't have any food on you. And now with 90 strength and divine super strength pots, I'm able to hit 57s already with my zombie axe, which is uh, quite high for a level 65 weapon, but uh, it looks very satisfying. Now that I have hit 91 strength and getting somewhat close to 85 slayer, I actually need to train a couple attack levels to get to level 75 so I can actually equip the arc light. And I do need to get a little bit more shards still because I actually forgot to pick these up because they weren't highlighted at first. But um, yeah, I just need a couple more ancient shards. So I don't have to do Abbey Demons with the zombie axe because the Abbey Demons are quite tanky and the arc light is definitely nice to have there. Finally got my third ancient shard so I can probably make the um, arc light for when I get Abbey Demons. Just got 75 attack, gonna switch back to, well actually defense now, but first we're gonna go back to our POH because I fucking forgot to switch my spellbook, of course, after doing a trip. But yeah, gonna quickly get uh, 80 defense, which is 11k away, and then it's back to strength training, I think. I don't know, maybe I should leave strength actually for chillying. Uh, nah, fuck it. I'm gonna go back to strength. 95 uh, magic. Coming in. Slayer levels should be around the corner as well, yeah. Almost at the same time. 83 Slayer as well. That means spiritual mages. So dragon boots are on the menu for the next time we get them. And I'm probably gonna... Disable uh, or like skip the task afterwards. Oh, there was uh, 92 strength. Halfway to uh, 99 now. And I'm gonna stop at 94 strength, I'm pretty sure. And then uh, switch over to attack. And prayer level at the moment is 77. Alright, got spiritual creatures. Let's get some dragon boots. There we go. Got a bottom as well. That's better than getting the top. Alright, it's gonna kill some spiritual mages now in the Zemi camp. No! My slayer level is drained. Oh, gonna kill some spiritual warriors first, I uh, <laughs> I suppose. Got the real OG fit with the um, room boots and the Zemi skirt torso. But yeah, it seems like uh, first gotta kill some... Uh, Spiritual Warriors until my Slayer level is level 83 again. It was honestly getting kind of scary. I uh, was almost running out of my task here. And it's not really worth like staying post-task for the Dragon Boots. But luckily, 5 kills left on the task. I just simply decided to get the drop and get it over with. But uh, yeah, now that I have the Dragon Boots, I no longer need a room one. So they are getting alchemized. And during Slayer, I've been doing a lot of Herb runs because... I have to do a lot of herb runs to actually get 99 herb roar, and if I don't do them during Slayer, I'll probably have to spend like two months processing all the seeds that I get from Slayer. So I try to do them as often as possible, but when you look at my inventory, you might think like a herb run with this inventory is just not gonna be good. But that's where the herb sack comes in clutch. When I pick herbs with the herb sack open in my inventory, they just go straight away into the herb sack. So I only need inventory space for the spade, bucket and magic secateurs. And after I am done with a herb run, I just simply drop some potions or whatever I have in my inventory and then start cleaning and noting the herbs at the leprechaun. And then I simply just teleport to Ferox Enclave to bag all the herbs. Alright, got some drakes. They are going on the blockity block list. 
Fire Giants will be unblocked now, because they have a lower weighting than Drakes. Do it right now, and extend or extend the Bloodfeld C8. I'm already just gonna, like, click Abbey Demons so I don't forget. It's gonna be too long until I get there. There we go, 85 Slayer. Abyssal Demons are available now. Hopefully I get a task soon. Then we can get our whip. <gasps> oh, baby. 224 Abbey Demons. All right, time to buy a new jelly because I am going to use that thing. Hopefully that's going to be the whip. I have slaughter bracelets for it as well. I think I, if I revert this thing, yeah, 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 I get a crystal seat and I think I can just use it on this dork or no. What should I do with crystal seats? Ilfine? Ilfine? Who? Crystal impling! I will get it. I will get... I don't know what I even need for this. I just can't resist grabbing it. Ah, that was not worth it. Ilfine. What's up, honey? Oh, nothing interesting happens. Hello. How much the halberd? 750. Ah, I'll take it. Alright, nice. Got 2k charges on that thing. Now I need to <laughs> bring the alt army with me. Alright, I've never done this task like this, so hopefully it doesn't go like too poorly. But it should be kind of fun. I'm going around though. I'm not gonna risk getting cooked by the dragons. So the basic idea of doing Abyssal Demons is that I need to tag them all with my Ultimate Iron Man and I need to make sure that I deal damage to all the ones in the room I start tagging first. This is very important. Then I go over to the other room, tag all these guys here. But now that I'm in this room, some Abyssal Demons in the other room uh, have de aggroed but since I already dealt damage to them, my alt can just lure them without stealing like the kill credit. So I still get a full XP because I already damaged them first and then the splash doesn't like trigger the half XP thing. So then I just go to the middle with both accounts and the dancers will stack them up. And once they are stacked up I can just unleash three jelly specs for a maximum DPS. And after they are dead I just pick up the ashes and use the spell and repeat. And doing the task like this is around 25% faster than doing it normally. But you guys are probably thinking, why not barrage these? Because that works as well. Well, there's a couple reasons. Same actually goes for Necreals, why I do those in the Slayer Tower. But I need to finish the melee skills as well. Like I need to get 99 attack strength and defense. And if I start barraging all of these guys, then first of all, it costs me a lot of money. I won't get 99 in the melee skills. And I can't really use the Ash spell that well, because that requires to be on the Arceus spellbook. And when I'm on Ancients, I would need to do spellbook swap um, Abyssal Demons, which is a method, but it is uh, very costly. And yeah, even with the money I saved with grains, it's actually going to be pretty tight on money to afford fletching and smithing after Slayer. So yeah, there's just a bunch of reasons why I need to melee all of the Abyssal Demons and Necreals. And also the Necreals, they have different drops in the Catacombs versus in the Slayer Tower. The Slayer Tower has much better herb seeds. But for this task, the only other benefit is Prayer XP, and it does give a lot of Prayer XP. Like, you pretty much get double the amount of Prayer XP than you are getting in Slayer, so... If I want to finish 99 Prayer by the time I finish 99 Slayer, I just need to do Epidemons and Necreals as much as possible. 
But to be perfectly honest, I did not really like doing this task for the first time around. The teleporting really pissed me off and I didn't know how to like counter it properly. And no, I'm not going to get the blip blop blip blop scroll for, from the wilderness thing. Because that is probably not going to be worth my time getting. But uh, on top of that, uh, there was also some lovely guy with a Venator bow who decided to crash me halfway through the task. And that really, really annoyed me. <laughs> But I guess that is uh, something I have had come in for all the countless Iron Man I crashed during Tuna Mill Slayer on my main. But yeah, it was definitely not fun. So I decided to stop doing the task and end the stream. And finish the task the next morning. No way, I actually got the whip. Right at the end of the task. Damn. Oh my god. Well... I just looked over to my OBS and I saw that the alt POV was somehow on the, on the screen and not my UEM. So yeah, I um, did not record me actually picking up the whip, but uh, it is here in my chat box. I got it right at the end of the task. So similar to the dragon boots, I uh, managed to snag them right before the task ended. And uh, But I will switch to my standard spellbook here. And I think it's time to say goodbye to the Zombie X because I got my Abyssal Whip. The Zombie X was a great weapon. It served me well. I was able to hit 59s with it and I sometimes could 2 hit certain monsters and it's gone. But yeah, 85 Slayer, a Whip and I dream to get 99 Prayer while I get 99 Slayer. Hopefully next episode we can... Already put an end to Slayer, a very long skill, but I've been playing quite a bit, so we are uh, getting already close to finishing it on the streams. So if you guys want to see what I'm already up to on the UEM live, then I definitely suggest you guys to check out my Twitch and Kick. And I might be live if you catch this video when it goes out, so do go to the description and click the links for the streams. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will be... Uh, back with the final slayer episode hopefully somewhat soon hopefully sooner than how long it took me to get this one out but yeah see you guys later